Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about Shaman and in particular Burn Shaman. Shaman is not doing too great in Ashes of Outland. There are no top tier Shaman decks around and I don't pretend this to be a top tier Shaman deck, although there's a playable shaman deck. There are a couple of playable shaman decks, like Highland Shaman can be built so that you can have minor success with it. Galagrond Shaman, Evolve Shaman, they can be built so that some success can be found. And same goes with this Burn Shaman. I got the idea from a Reddit post, there was someone who had played a Burn Shaman variant to Legend. It was like a Burn Shaman Totem Shaman hybrid and I didn't really like those totem aspects, so I built it as a pure Burn Shaman and added stuff like Bone Chew Brawlers and Amani Berserkers into the mix. Cards that I have had success with in several classes and that are now becoming more and more common, especially in Demon Hunter. So the overall idea of this type of burn shaman is that at the start of the game you get your minions on the board, you chip in some damage with those minions and then you try to finish the job with direct damage spells. The true star whenever you happen to draw it is Lady Bashi. Lady Bashi is just phenomenal when you get to the prime part of it, so not very often, but when it works, it really works. So Lady Vashi is a card that you want to keep in your mulligan typically. You want to play it as soon as possible, you want it to die. And then you will eventually get Vashi Prime, and Vashi Prime is going to draw a bunch of free spells for you, and those spells may end up being burn spells, and then you just pew pew to the face. However, the deck is much more than that. I have only one like a game or two like that, although it is hilarious when it works. But the rest of the time, these sorts of minions Buffing up your stuff, Storm's Wrath, Surging Tempest, getting Vecina buffs on them, it's like having a bloodlust. And then just conserving some of your direct damage spells, then playing like Squall Hunter for a plus two spell damage, pew pew some direct damage spells to the face. There are some draconic aspects to this deck. There's the Squall Hunter, obviously there's Cobalt Spell King, because Cobalt Spell King gives you one mana spells and Shaman one mana spells are pretty good, because there's Lightning Bolts and Storm Wrath and Earth Shocks. Just good stuff all around, so that gives you some more reach and some more resources so that you can carry on the game. And these dragons also allow you to make use of Lightning Breath. Lightning Breath, when you're holding a dragon, it's 3 mana, deal 4 damage to 3 minions. And you will see in the gameplay section of this guide that when you lightning storm some boards that can really catch the opponent by surprise and allow your minions to keep pushing face damage. So overall a pretty fun variant of Shaman. I had moderate success with this deck, but as with all Shaman decks right now, there is the caveat that don't expect Shaman decks to be top tier. Maybe in next expansion. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get notifications when new videos come. I also stream live on Twitch 6 days a week, so check out the description below for a link to my Twitch channel. And now, let's go take a look at Burn Shaman in action. Alright, Tempest and Bone Chewer, we're going with this. Let's see how this goes. Against the Druid I would of course have to be very fast. I'd hope that you doesn't keep multiple cards in hand like they do. Overcharged and ready to fight. Well, then I need to hope that the druid doesn't have removal pieces that they can use to kill my minions. But they probably do. I mean, there's always the coin book beaming if there's nothing else. Coin wrath here would be so wrong, but I don't think they're going for that one. There is the Beaming Sidekick play. There's multiple interesting plays here. Because there's the Beaming Sidekick Storm's Wrath. Then there's just Hero Power in order to do Bone Chewer Brawler Storm's Wrath next turn. Or there's just, just the Bone Chewer Brawler now. I think I'll go for the Bone Chewer Brawler. That is the greediest play. There's no chance that he can Wrath or Bok Beam the Bone Chewer Brawler away. But there's also a chance that he wants to play Fungal Fortunes instead. And Fungal Fortunes opens up the opportunity for me to get this one buffed up. Oh, now I can buff it up a lot. So I can do the Slurper, then I will be overloaded for next turn. But Druid would have to have an Innervate in order to go for... 
I think this is fine. I'll do Slurper. Titanic like you're being sidekick. It's the sidekick, right? I can do sidekick. Then I can do Storm's Wrath. Which allows me to push a little bit more here. Heavily overload for next turn. So next turn I won't be able to do much. But I do have 11 damage here. So Druid needs Coin Innervate. Glowfly Swarm. That doesn't take him to 7 mana yet next turn. And when it doesn't take him to 7 mana then that doesn't do anything really. I think there's a Titanic Lucky on that one. I just want a lot of health on this Bone Chewer Brawler. So that he really can't do anything on this. He can't Bok Beam. Next turn though he can go for Exotic Mount Cellar, which could give him Rush Minions, which in turn could kill the Bone Chewer. Or he could get a kill on the Bone Chewer with something like... Well, it would take a lot. Innervate doesn't make the Bok Beams free. You need seven natural mana crystals. So Innervate only allows him to play like Mount Cellar, and then he would need to have another Innervate. He has, actually does have two Innervates. Goes to 17, 3, 9, 10, and 12. 12 plus 3, I have 15 damage here. Alright, the next turn he can go for Mount Cellar. So I have 5, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I would need another 11, which I do not have. Hmm. If I overload myself, I get one additional damage from this. I won't have the mana to have 11 damage next turn either. I think I still need to go for the Spellkin now. It can potentially give me... It can potentially give me... Urchok to silence his Mount Cellar, or whatever he plays the taunt on. Now it gave me... Exactly 11 damage for 5 mana. So if he doesn't heal up and he doesn't have any mana to heal, he bo spent both innervates. Then that means that I can just. I can just burn him down here. Alright, we actually get to kill the druid. We can try with something like this. Let's see. What do you think about Secret Rogue? Currently, the stealth variant seems to be better. But, I mean, Secret Rogue is still perfectly viable. We, of course, talk about Secret Galagrunt Rogue, I assume. Well, does Galagrunt need to be mentioned anymore? There are no viable rogue decks without Galagrunt at the moment. But yeah, the Secret version right now, it seems that it's fallen behind the stealth version a little bit. Secret version was very well tuned already before. And stealth version has now... It has seen more play, so it has caught up and pipe and surpassed the secret version. But yeah, it's still okay. Oh no, cumulum. Oh. I don't know why that was. Why would cumulum not be permitted? I don't know. Why no Cumulo Maximus in this deck? Because I look at looked at the statistics and Cumulo Maximus was performing was the worst performing card in the list actually by a fairly big margin. So therefore I decided that I would rather play the deck with cards that are strong than with cards that are weak. I do like Cumulo Maximus, it's a fun card, but it seems a little bit too slow and too difficult to make use of right now. Do I use a lightning bolt so that I can get Marsh spawn next turn? 
Yeah, I guess I do. That will get me the marsh spawn for next turn, potentially. Marsh spawn can sometimes be a little bit difficult to use. Priest probably has Holy Nova or Bread of the Infinite to clear this. I still have the option to play Lightning Bread, of course. So it's got Tula Hanar. Yeah, it's a it's a fine card. It's Marsh spawn time. Ah, terrible options. I suppose it's the Lightning Breath. I don't think giving health to totems is going to help me. Ah. Things are not going as well as they could. Another Marsh Bone, but now I can't play it. I don't want to give up on the only dragon I have right now. Let's build a board like this. We'll see whether the priest has an answer to this at six mana. Priest could. It's definitely possible. I was thinking about using the coin there to try to like do things with the marsh pawn for next turn. Priest is just really difficult with the, any sort of this kind of aggressive deck. Priest is very good at defending. Like, they just generate random defenses all the time. I mean, I just have to go with the Vecina. Hope there's no Soul Mirror. Let's find out. I don't think I have... I don't think I have an alternative here. I do want to trade that away. This has to push face here. Maybe there is no soul mirror. We'll see. He would also have like lightning breath from my deck. Okay, so no soul mirror. That's a piece of good news. Breath of the Infinite could be played. Now this is getting really interesting. So I have seven, I have eleven damage here. Oh boy. He could have apotheosis. He has such a big board. Go just kill these three. Leave the Fate Weaver up. I'd have to trade a lot to kill all of them. Maybe I do. Maybe I hit here. And maybe I actually do hit here. Maybe I hit there too. And just kill that whole board there. Maybe I give this a try. This doesn't push damage, but this doesn't leave him with an apotheosis play. And it leaves him with a fairly sizable board. Can I get the Earth Shock? A simple spell. I can. Do I have lethal? Yes, I do. Dead priest. Maybe I can keep this. I'm not sure if I can. We'll see. That's probably going to be Amani on two in the bone tour on three. Oh dear, that's going to be a sidekick. Hey, I got you, friend. Ouch, that was so good. Because he can hit 
this one in, then this one. I can hit this one in, then this one in, then hero power. Ouch. Has to be the Amadi first. And he, he kept everything. He has more stuff. So he could have like Slice there. Slice would be insane. That's not bad either. Just sequence it right. He does not care. That's surprising. I mean, it can still be powerful enough. Such choices. I could try to look for a lackey with this. Then use the lackey and then use the Storm's Wrath. Instead of Bone Chewer, Storm's Wrath. Like, if I can get damage lackey or rush lackey, I could get rid of this one. Four held on this. I'll try the lucky route. That was not the lucky I wanted. We'll take it. I'll do it like this for now. Okay, strike allows him to face tank the 6 tree. Then he can trade away all the rest too. And he can even keep this alive. Now he can hero power and use this to trade away the bone chewer, for example. Demon Hunter is the weakest matchup of Burn Shaman, by the way. In case you didn't know, it is the worst matchup for this archetype. I was, of course, what I'm doing here is trying to build this so that it would be better able to contest Demon Hunter. But I'm not sure whether I have succeeded. Maybe I haven't. Ah, the infamous Warglaves of Azinoth. Those are so good. That's going to be one big... One big battlefield. Too much damage. Too quickly. And Fork Lightning kills the Battle Fiend. But I have no way... Well, he doesn't necessarily get through. Yeah, I do have a way. 3 mana. 4 mana. Let's see if I can roll a Taunt Totem. I can. Then I can play the Bone Chewer. Then I can play Storm's Wrath on these. So on the board he actually can't push through this, but I mean, Demon Hunter will have the damage. He could have Kane for lethal immediately. Is that immediate lethal? Well, with the Claybound Adept, right? No. Now he messed up the sequencing with that. Yeah, that, that's not the way that is played. But I mean, he has already has six from here. He only needs another two. Taunts are useless as long as there are Warglaves. I can get the Frost Shock. Earth Shock isn't going to do it. Not enough mana for Explosive Evolution. So I'm afraid there is no way. He needs two damage. Three cards to deal two damage. Five mana to do it. Metamorphosis is lethal, Claybound Adept is lethal, another Slice is lethal, Chaos Strike is lethal. Topic the Claybound Adept. 
Well, we did make a pretty good fight out of that. He needed to have some excellent resources there. I might actually keep Lightning Breath and the Spellkin. Let's see, that might be useful. If you lose more than you win, your rank will go down. No DS Twitch, that's not true. You actually need around 60% to gain ranks in Legend. In Legend, 55% win rate means that your rank will go down. 55% isn't enough to even keep your rank the same. Maybe it could have... or it was like that once upon a time. That you lost, you lost rank by losing more, but it's not anymore. Ah, he can hero power and use this one to trade. That's annoying. That will still have a divine shield then. What can I do about it? Very little, I'm afraid. Hmm. It's about two attack. I can't do much about that. Hey, we'll just sacrifice this. How can you go down? Easy. You lose MMR from losing more than you gain MMR from winning. Which means that if you, even if you don't lose as much as you win, you will still lose MMR. If you don't play, don't, not playing is usually the best choice in the current ladder unless you want to play top tier decks. For example, this season I have lost several thousand ranks with a positive win rate. Oh boy. That was terrible for him. I thought I had lost this game for sure. But he just destroyed his board. I mean, I'm happy that he destroyed his board for me, but... Oh boy. Did this game take a different turn now? Can't get a great Vecina out there. This is still the play. Seven Shrine Portal to the face. Buff up the tree drop that I get. I'm overloaded and I can play Vecina next turn to give these more attack. If he doesn't kill them. Why are you wearing something on your head? It's the Fellfire Festival. And I have a Ragnaros Fellfire Festival scarf. Yay! Fellfire Festival time. Skeptical games. Does very much change when you play in the casual lobby? The casual lobby is separate. So no. Casual, casual lobby works differently. Or it works the same, but it has a separate MMR that is not dependent on your ranked MMR. But then again, because no one plays anything serious in casual lobby, then that means that you can't actually play test anything there. I mean, I think this is Vecina. I will trade away the cane. Let's see. Yeah, casual lobby is... I mean, it's impossible to play this because you can't get valid games there. So then you would have to, like, form a training circle just to build decks, and you would have to force your friends to play against your homebrews if you don't want to tank your rank. I grow in Can you learn what your MMR is? No, it's invisible. Can both players play the same rank in Legend? No, only if there is, like, a visual glitch. Well, that's interesting, because I have like Lava Burst over there, and I suppose I will use it. Just Hero Power here. Do I give this one more health? Or the Vecina? 2-8 Vecina. Such choices. Still only takes two hits from Warglaives. But if he had Warglaives, he would use it. This is some kind of Highland deck, isn't it? That's what it looks like to me. Hey, I'm gonna give the hell over that one. And I love a burst his life still minion. I hit him in the face a little. 
If he had war glaives, he would have used them last turn instead of playing the battle lord, because war glaives were just so much better than the battle lord, right? Because he face tanked the five one anyway. So he didn't have war glaives last turn. Okay, it lost the health. I would have silenced Vecina, but that's just me. He could also have a way to kill the Vecina, of course. That is possible too. Well, now he'll face tank the tree one. Will he not? Almost certainly he will. But he has even more stuff. And Orc Merchant. Alright. So this is getting interesting. I think it's Marsh Pawn time. I cast a spell last turn. But I would also have 8 damage with these. If I push 5 to the face now, then 8 damage next turn is potentially lethal. He needs to have a healing card. He could have a healing card. We're going for the damage. Let's hit face. See what happens. He might be able to heal. It is not a Highlander deck, by the way, there are two Orc Merchants. But there is still the chance that he finds an I Beam. Does he find the I Beam? That's the big question. That card is not an I Beam. That card is not an I Beam. No I Beam. That's a win. Alright, it was a really scary opener, but then he completely blew it by being super greedy. But we'll take it. That's a win. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.